the common modalités de gouvernance I would mention two brief ones. One is the need, which is something I think we stress a lot, but it, it needs to be stressed, that the need to take care and, and analyze case by case, but case by case. Be careful with generalizations, with infrastructure that has proven to be the case again. <laughs> and the other one is the fact that I think in, in other sectors, uh, it's much more uh, acceptable the idea that the commons is necessarily a third. It's not the market, it's not the, 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 the state, but it's something which is a third. In the area of infrastructure, there is a tension there because uh, there are those who view uh, infrastructure as connected necessarily to the, to the state, even if you want, if you want commons enablement. enablement. So that, that could come through reappropriation, that could come through uh, strategic partnerships, but there, there's also this, this, this need. Uh, it's, not, it's not fully consensual, but yeah, I, I think it's much more present than in, in other sectors. Well, in my stream, there wasn't really one proposal that was popping up like uh, um, very surprisingly or so, but uh, what, what really showed up was that um, there was a sort of a, a common notion that the three different approaches to money in relation to the commons um, could really stand side by side and uh, that, that they all could find their role in creating the commons, sustaining the commons. Um, so that in a way um, a, a common vision of a, a commons economy um, with and without money could uh, appear um, that would include the demonetized aspects as well as money being a tool to sustain the commons as well as money itself being a commons being in the hand of the people and, and being controlled by the people. Um, and, and I found it quite interesting that uh, there was not really a confrontation between those three uh, which, which I had feared uh, of before. So um, the, the whole demonetized debate sort of uh, was, uh, was really um, being open to all the other aspects. So, so that there was, there was sort of an... Um, the, the approach was, was clarified in a way that demonetizing would not mean doing everything without money but would mean that um, demonetizing uh, is more about not reproducing the logics that are in the current monetary system, uh, which means extraction, uh, profitization, privatization, and so on, which also means commodification of all work, labor, all, also care labor, nature, and so on. So the, the, the approach was not to reproduce the, these logics, but um, then they also agreed that this could be done with other monetary tools, then we do have them right at the moment, and that money could be designed as a tool which would support exactly this uh, approach. And uh, all, all these approaches could uh, sort of um, be combined uh, in a way uh, sustaining the commons. I don't know about it, not as a single proposal, but there are two related concepts that I think um, were explored and need, need to be made into concrete proposals. One is kind of expanding the uh, community of people who think of themselves as knowledge commoners, and um, that includes um, people who we now would, in common language, I think we would say are beating the bound. So people who are just acting without permission, whether it's to share information online or, or share seeds um, or um, leak information, for example. Those are all groups that in the um, communities that might think of themselves as, 
as knowledge commoners like free software are um, there's very little um, crossover or thinking of uh, thinking of themselves as being part of uh, as being part of one community and then there's also kind of a uh, diversity aspect to that enlarging the community um, you know, most the kind of formal free software and open content sort of community is very uh, your European or European descent uh, male dominated um, and so I think that's almost kind of a there needs to be a commoning of the knowledge commons movements if you will there and the, the other side the more um, um, thinking side of that I guess is that uh, the values the ethics of at least the formal knowledge commons movements are is very individualistic and sees the like the lone programmer being the person who's going to free the world when really it needs to be seen as a uh, community uh, a, a community effort um, and we need to bring in ethics and values from the commons movements which i which i think the formal knowledge commons efforts like free software really haven't done um so those are the two themes i think i'm really interested in exploring the cr crossover with my with my neighbor the crossover between the doing away with labor working and caring in the common stream and and the the money uh, value stream because in our discussions we came back over and over again to this the, the question of um, valuing because there is this critique that care work and also um, nature services are externalized and now there are these proposals uh, to to value it assess and appreciate it but then very likely expresses in monetary units. And that means um, it is the solution is, 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 a, is, a dead, is a dead born child, so to say, because you are monetizing um, nature services and care service, which means you are economizing life. And that's, that's, that's a dangerous pathway. It's not really the way out. And I think if we would um, reframe the, the care economy, um, as the center of all economy, then it would have a trickle down to what kind of transactions are needed and have to be organized so that money would have a completely different role, role and uh, uh, yeah, to, to serve these transactions. Well, I guess uh, Miguel and I talked about this explicitly because there is a very, um, there can be, I mean, there's an easy crossover, I guess, in the digital infrastructure, if you will, and the need and the uh, very evident role that shared knowledge, both knowledge of how to form the relationships to build infrastructure and the kind of technical, the blueprints for infrastructure as well. Um, so I, th I think we both tried a little bit to um, segment off the overlapping conversation just because both topics are already so big, but also acknowledge the, the linkage there. Um, I, I think um, to some of the other streams, actually, it would I would love to have other conversations. I mean, personally, I could learn most from the, the work and care stream, I think, just because that's where I have the least knowledge. But also, fundamentally, there's a question about how do people produce knowledge in the commons and sustain themselves in the the conversation in you know the typical conversation in the open knowledge free software community whatever is, is always how do I sustain myself in you know in the market economy and if we so another way to kind of comment that discussion would be to say well how how is producing knowledge going to uh, going to work when we uh, are with a transition to a more, you know, commons oriented approach to work, care, et cetera. So. There's a similar issue in the, in the money stream or in, in that whole field. Um, what is already there is that the 
the open software movement, um, the, the people who are active in the open software movement are m mainly the ones who are also building the open software currencies, the platforms, the protocols, um, with their uh, with, with the same principles they use in the open knowledge and open software movement. Uh, so there's sort of a cross-fertilization and uh, I think what is needed is to give that back in a way to the open knowledge community to, um, uh, to, to open the knowledge that has been raised by developing and practicing these currencies needs to be open again uh, to others to reproduce it and to learn from it and to to redefine and to refine uh, everything that has been done in the community before so that there's a mutual exchange, a mutual learning process uh, between the two. Um, I think that's, that's one of the key issues uh, where the, the money people have to learn from, from the open knowledge and open software people at the moment. Um, there was there was in uh, in the framing session that Carolina Botero did. There was a very nice uh, uh, indication of the overlap. She was talking about yeah, the the, the pateras, um, the traditional midwives uh, in remote areas. I mean, who who have helped women deliver for centuries, and they are now marginalized and pushed because they are not certified. And we've seen that all over. I have worked myself in, Cam in the Cambodian context where um, through international development aid, similar trends have been, uh, have, been, have been pushed. And now they have learned that this has had very contraproductive effects because the uh, mortality of, of women in labor has increased because um, they didn't have the professional help that they used to have because of that system change. So this is, I think, a very, a very clear cross, crossover uh, in terms of, 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 of traditional knowledge to be, to be valued. We are again here with the valuation. Yeah, I think uh, we, uh, me and Mike, we address this more explicitly in, in our case, but it's was pretty evident that between all streams there was there was over uh, overlaps and cross cutting issues so uh, I, we, you 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 brought this uh, uh, before Ludwig uh, money as infrastructure markets as infrastructure this is complete overlap uh, in this case I can also think of uh, the need for infrastructure for care so does it so that it becomes something uh, dealt with in common in, in in a common way and not as unpaid feminine labor and uh, in with the natu natural resources there are more perhaps political immediate uh, cross cut cross cuttings so if th if you think of uh, in Brazil uh, Belo Monte Dam uh, mm. uh, this has huge impacts on on natural resource commons. So infrastructure, how it, how it is built today, uh, it directly impacts the natural resource commons. That's, that's really not easy to say, especially in, in my stream, in my case, that's, uh, it's an issue um, that is raised in other movements as well. Uh, the money issue is not uh, um, purely a commons issue. Uh, there's a monetary reform movement um, active since decades already. Uh, there's an, an anti-interest movement uh, uh, which has a big history in Germany as well. So um, I see that they are all struggling to move forward because they fight against the, the, um, the current dogmas of conventional economics. And um, I think within this uh, commons framework, they might have a new chance to address these issues uh, in a way that they, they are recognized by a broader audience, as well as by other actors in other movements, which could support them to really do research, to do practical work, to do experiments, and to, to feedback all their uh, experiences uh, into 
into the different movements so that can repeat these uh, and, and refine these exper uh, experiments. So, um, yeah. Um, I would I would really like to try at least to 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 work um, uh, to work on um, st strengthening the clarity about the parallels that we have in dealing with the dilemmas of externalization, uh, externalization of, of, of natural resources that are used uh, and not priced in, and in parallel, the whole reproductive work that is a prerequisite to all our economies. But as stressed earlier, the dilemma that we had in our, in our, um, in our stream is that if we are monetizing it, it's not going to help us. But it is systemically really one, one and the same, which means we really need to develop alternatives that do not lead us into this um, economization of life, but really turn things upside down. And I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite an agenda. Um, well, kind of like I said before, one uh, thing that's going to continue to be worked on with greater priority, I guess, is expanding the communities in a, who think of themselves as commoning knowledge and making those communities more inclusive. And as a result of that more inclusive engagement, I think kind of thickening the ethics of knowledge comments, I guess. But an another another thing is going to be, I think, to think. Uh, more expansively about what protecting co um, knowledge commons means and how uh, how communities can do that. To, so far, the imagination has been very limited, basically, to how we can use the existing uh, property regime, basically hack the property regime to try to protect knowledge commons. And that's had a, a very it's had a it's had a big um, um, it's had a big kind of emotional role, but its effect in actually protecting protecting knowledge commons has probably not been too big. And we need to think of more. We need to be creative about uh, common centric ways of 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 doing that. Well, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to say that th these were the first steps because there is work done, or there, there was already work done on infrastructure and commons, but we're definitely in the very beginning of a path. And uh, I actually think that the next steps will include identifying which path is this. And then uh, this kind of boils down to uh, getting people from uh, different initiatives to recognize themselves as uh, alter different solutions to similar problems. This is to have a certain awareness of a, a common terrain. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's mostly it. There is a, a huge impact for me personally um, that I have learned that uh, the commons debate is more about the practice of commoning than about the commons as being stuff, right? It's it's uh, it's more the uh, the doing, doing the commoning, and uh, with with that new. Uh, through that new glasses, I can see things differently. I can see how they interconnect. I can see that, uh, for example, the anti-privatization movement uh, for water resources has something to do with the knowledge movement and open knowledge. And I see that there's a, a stronger connection between what is done in, in care labor and, for example, time currencies. That there's the overlaps um, in in the very initiatives who are doing that. The only thing is that they are not really, they, they do not identify maybe to be part of the commoning 
um, movement because there is not such a movement that ha is already predefined. But this is maybe the, the challenge that we face now. I agree with that analysis. I, would, I guess I would add that um, the fact of having these five categories immediately le makes you think, well, you know, to prob problematize those, those five categories and think of what are other intersect other cross cutting things and what are and what's missing and so I mean the obvious thing kind of missing is probably global governance and um, I know other ways of looking at it might be more uh, field of expertise expertise specific like there are really le uh, deep legal problems um, about how you know they're related to how commons relate to the state for example that you know are an obvious cross-cutting um, cross thing. Um, so I'm not expressing dissatisfaction at all. I'm just saying that just the fact of having categories makes you think of, you know, you know reflect on, on other productive ways of, of looking at the problem. Um, if you remember the framing session where I had this iceberg thing, the tip of the iceberg, a rather small part is the market and how it really actually frames our minds and our lives and of course how it shapes money systems and if we imagine this to be reversed because that would reflect the reality that we have already then I think we have all the connects with all other streams the strongest I really see with the with the money, as I said, but it has to it ha it really trickles into all other streams, the way we, the way we, um, yeah, the, the way it would uh, reform our thinking in organizing infrastructure, how much energy is going to be consumed or not, or could be saved, and how we deal with knowledge. It would simply do away with enclosure. Yeah, I strongly agree, especially with uh, Ludwig, uh, with Ludwig's answer in this case. I would just add that we we shift from uh, using two uh, as, uh, using as categories two abstract notions, which are useful as analytical tools, but which we shouldn't give them much more than that. Two categories that direct direct us direct di straight to the practices. So we're really dealing with concrete things. So this is, I think this has a, a huge healing impact for, for a moment. It's a political struggle against modern enclosures. Uh -huh. Like the new uh, transnational trade and investment agreement that is going to be ne negotiated between the EU and the USA is going to have a huge impact if we are not really getting our heads around what that means for the policy space that is already shrinking to build the commons uh, or to protect the commons. Plus the other issue is this monetization of, 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 of nature, the new economy of nature. That's a new enclosure movement, and it is a it's a it's a policy result of the of the Rio Plus Twenty conference, which is a disaster. It's meant to really be measures to protect the planet, but it's going to run us into deeper problems. Yeah, well, uh, I can just add to this that the it's very clearly the the very architecture of our monetary system which is fostering this enclosure so the the struggle the political struggle we face in the in the money with the money issues is that we have a monocultural monetary system which is per se anti commons and uh, we we need to uh, develop strategies to to offer people alternatives so that they do not use this anti commons uh, monetary system to build up the commons, because it's a paradox. It, it wouldn't work. And this is also a political struggle on all levels. So you, if you go to the municipalities and ask for support for your local initiative, currency initiative, 
you need to convince people that uh, it's in, in their interest because uh, it's fostering their regional, their local uh, economies uh, to do so. Uh, and at the same time, you can um, try to lobby on the, uh, on the top political levels to change the monetary architecture as a whole. So there's a, a huge field of development of potential impacts that can be created and people need to be creative to find ideas and uh, ways to do that. I, I very much uh, appreciate this question because I think this is one of the improvements, the advances that we've made from the, the, the previous conference to this one. The, the conference was pretty more mature or less afraid to touch on what are the political challenges that we have uh, to face in the way. Uh, and uh, in the case of the infrastructure stream, also because of what I, what I spoke earlier of the relationship with the state, uh, it's really hard not to think of uh, a discussion where the political aspect doesn't jump in. Either because you want the state to, 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 to make infrastructure that works for the commons, or because you want to, the state not to ruin what is by being done as infrastructure by the commons, so the, the state is really always there. Um, I, I think there's a, a uh, political struggle really yet to be had within the knowledge commons that involves politics not merely being a matter of individual ethics. In other words, do I produce and use free knowledge or fighting very short-term battles against the latest enclosure, but instead seeing commoning as a politically potent thing in and of itself and something that the entire um, policy ap apparatus, we, we need to, as I guess as Carolina Bertaro said in the keynote, we need to bring the bring the commons agenda in through the front door instead of yeah, just kind of sneaking it in by arguing against, and, you know, argue, saying this enclosure is a bad thing, but instead we need to be provocative and say, yes, the commons is a, not, you know, it's not just a policy uh, alternative, it's the, you know, it's a political demand, basically.